what's going on guys and welcome back so as we know this is our first full format now starting off set five without an online client to really get a big jump on the meta and that's why i have a lot of deck profile type videos like this deck discussions if you will um to go over and i think that a lot of people just whether you're playtesting with friend groups whether you're watching multiple videos online by all means don't just watch mine i mean if you do thank you check out a lot of people's get multiple opinions get different viewpoints get as much information as you can because we are a little limited into how much we can get now which is fine it's actually kind of feels like we're going way way back in time um you know if our seasoned TCG players, you know, before the internet exploded and we could see all this great information online. However, today we're bringing back the last DLC deck that won. What differences did they make? Which cards do they play? You can already see we're not playing the Chicha, we're not playing the Tipo, and Pacha also not in there. So which new cards are we going to play and why aren't we playing those cards, I guess? Well, the draw engine is nice, but at the same time, this deck, you don't just dump your hand where you can, with your Fishbone Quill or your Tipo, where you can just wheel and get a new hand, right? So that right there is one thing, but at the same time, maybe the draw on turn two would actually be good then. Well, it'd be more turn three because, you know, you ink for turn, then you say sing one jump ahead, then you get to draw a card, and it works out really nice. Don't get me wrong, and there's nothing wrong with that. However, my biggest issue here is so many of the good ruby cards are already uninkable and the deck's uninkable count is sitting at 19. I didn't want to bring that uninkable count up much higher if I could avoid it. Uh, so that's why we went away from there. Tipo, again, I think he's a fantastic card and maybe he finds his way into this deck, but I just, I felt like there's better plays early on and unlike the sapphire steel deck that uses a little more character ramping this deck has really just done well using the one jump ahead the how far i'll go and using that to ramp i do think that this deck answers aggro better and i get it my sapphire steel deck maybe i was disrespecting aggro a little too much i went for something like along came zeus over grab your swords because it one shots the uh, Daisy Duck, it's better against locations. I think Agro is good, but Steel Song already answers Agro really well. And I just think in the big spectrum, I think Agro is going to be there. Agro will always be there, but it's not going to be one of the top three or four or five decks. I really don't think it will be. And maybe I'm wrong. So maybe I'm wrong on that. And then that deck absolutely needs some work. The how far all goes should absolutely come out. Throw in like two ba-booms, two grab your swords, and then boom, the deck just answers Agro all of a sudden, just like that. I went for the consistency, the ramp, the long-term portion of the game to sure up the matchups that I truly expect to play against more, and that's why we did it that way. But that's enough talking about the last video. This is this video. So we answer Agro right off the bat with four Queen of Hearts and two Sisus, the daring visitor i always want to say darling uh so for those who don't know when you play sisu you can choose a character that your opponent has with one strength or less like daisy duck like curse merfolk like maleficent like lila like flynn rider all of these hyper aggro cards i mean heck here i'm flavisham even um not bell not bell who is the other rapunzel not even the same color. Rapunzel, one strength. There's a lot of really good targets for Sisu now. And if you're that worried about aggro, this card answers them really, really good. In addition to that, Queen of Hearts being a rush, um, I like her to answer into that aggro matchup as well. And then we get into some consistency cards with our four Tala, four Hiram. Uh, this deck's cost curve goes all the way up over that nine mark. Uh, it's just all over the place. Nothing really overly abundant only 12 in the two and four categories otherwise we're lower than that so it's just a pretty steady curve across the board as we get into our bigger characters we are playing four maui three madame medusa four tamatoas and two maleficence i went away from ice block control um 
Once again, set five, my first iteration was Ice Block Control. It was playing multiple Sisus, both of the three drops. It was playing the big Sisu. And just as I'm going over the deck, over the deck, and I'm like, I got to get my uninkable count down. I got to get my overall deck count down. How can I do this? How can I answer what I need to? And it felt like Sisu is one of those cards that if you get clumped up, it's usually on Sisu. And at the same time, you don't necessarily need her to win either because we have other blowout cards. You have Be Prepared. You have Maleficent. You have Madame Medusa. Little Sisu still stays in because, again, especially early on, if we're worried about that aggro format, Daring Visitor Sisu is very strong. So I guess looking at characters, spoiler, you might have saw like the one new card I put into the deck. These are the changes for me that I think that this deck is going to go over. Just to answer those early threats a little better, Rush Queen and Sisu making their way back into the deck because they did play her for a while. Um, in addition to that, though, we're playing two Develop Your Brains, three Vision of the F- sorry, four Vision of the Future. Looking at the top five cards on turn two, it's essentially Develop Your Brain, but you get to look at three more cards. It is crazy good. I almost didn't play any Develop Your Brains, but I needed some more one drops, and it's just a consistency card, so why not? And then four Brawls again. It's a really good card to out your opponents. 12 songs we went with four one jump for how far i'll go that's your ramp tool and a how far i'll go also helping with the consistency of the deck and then three b prepareds i think especially between develop between vision between how far between hiram between popsicles i felt like three b prepared was plenty and didn't really need that fourth one maybe it comes back in here but at the moment i'm pretty content with just the three And then trying out the uh, oldie but goodie uh, Dean King fam who has just been absolutely on a tear with this deck. Um, Also playing no Sisu by the way. So that's one big reason I didn't necessarily feel bad about not playing Sisu because he has been proving time and time again. You don't have to play the Sisu. And last time I picked up the deck I was like I don't really want to play it but I feel like you have to do it. You know. He proved us all wrong. You did not have to do it. Anyway, dig a little deeper. So you look at the top seven cards, put two into your hand. It's kind of like vision. You look at the top five, you put one into your hand. Both cards are pretty good. Being able to sing together is just really strong. I'm kind of curious to see if he actually keeps this card in here now that we have vision because look at seven, add two. Look at five, add one. Obviously, inkable versus uninkable. So there's some push and give there. Um, this could easily be a fourth be prepared if you decided not to play it. If you decide that develop and vision are enough for you. And kind of funny how they go hand in hand with it. Same, Essentially same effects, just slightly better. You have Arthur, the apprentice, and you have Merlin, the master. Just saying. Works out pretty good. And then we have 11 items. So two Vitalispheres, four Popsicles three great stone dragons and two lucky dimes i'm still not overly sold on fishbone quill in this deck i would probably play tipo sooner than i played the quill and i think quill gets a little bit better in the sapphire steel deck because of the chicha and the draw engine from it however in this deck i just i felt like you have the earlier threats with your sisu with your queen that you get better value out of the great stone. It's you're not waiting till turn three to try and play a character. You're playing characters on two, top possibly on three. You play your stone dragon whenever you need to. Kind of based on the rest of your hand. It's really not like a turn one or two play. It's essentially there as an item that you can banish or that can get you some ramp, especially in the later game, so that you can just start dropping multiple big threats at the same time. Uh, I think the ramp in this deck is truly right here between the one jump and the how far I'll go. Being able to get to like five ink on turn three while also adding a card to your hand is just very, very strong. Um, I think this deck is still tier one. I think it's going to need a little more adaptation, but I think this is a really, really strong starting point and like I, I don't know what else to say about it. I think that it's a really good, strong starting point. And again, fair warning, every single list I ever put on here is never finalized. Why? We can look at a DLC winning deck list, right? 
That list is not finalized. Why? Why would a DLC finalist list not be finalized, right? So think about it this way. That deck, they play tech cards, they do certain things, they had good matchups, whatever it is, and we see how the format shapes out for that event. And then we as players, we're like, okay, so how do I beat what's going on there? We start to change our decks. And then as the winner, he has to say, okay, this is what I did. This is how they're going to answer me. Now, how do I get back ahead of the curve? Because I don't want to just stay here and wait for them to catch me. I want to stay in front of them. So then you have to keep making iterations to the deck. And that's why we see a gap between truly great players and really good players and average players. Like you, If you get stuck in that chasing mentality, you're just that you're chasing if you can get ahead of it which it's not easy to do and that's why there's so few players i'm actually kind of curious i might go back through all the dlcs and see how many players have multiple tops um, i know there's not that many so i'm actually kind of curious on that now maybe we can do a whole breakdown on if we have a true best um player list could be fun anyway that's enough rambling we're off the topic of the deck thanks for watching until next time like share subscribe Comment down below. Take care.